LinkedIn Sales Navigator is an incredibly powerful tool that can help you generate tons of leads, book meetings, and millions of dollars in closed business if you know what you're doing. In this video, I'm going to break down a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to use it. These are things that I wish someone had shown me early on. So let's dive in. So I'm going to cover three core things in this video today, which is number one, how to build a hyper targeted search list to build lead lists. Number two, how to process and work the lead list, like messaging them. Number three, leveraging alerts to nurture prospects. And then of course, I'm going to kind of touch on this a little bit, but but really, how do you combine it all together with the social selling strategy if you're planning to also leverage that as well? So let me go ahead and just dive right into LinkedIn. So if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, the Sales Navigator button is right over here. And if your company doesn't pay for Sales Navigator, which sometimes they don't, I personally think if my company wasn't paying for it, I personally pay it out of pocket because it's so worth it. So I'm going to show you some really neat things today on how to do that. So let's start with first doing lead searches. So you'll see there's lead filters as account filters. Uh, I'm going to go through both. So I'm going to start with lead filters first. And you'll see here, let me move my head over here. You can see here that this is really neat because it breaks down from a company to role, spotlights, posted content, personal workflow, etc. I'm going to go through each one. But you'll be able to do pretty targeted searches to find really, really qualified prospects. So for example, here, you can start the company head count so you can see here it goes from self-employed like really your you know, one person all the way up to 10,000 plus employees and that's really useful and this is really good especially if you're targeting certain size companies that may have a certain level of cash flow that you're going after so let's just say for example I want to go after companies that are between let's say 51 to 100 and 201 to 500 and well, 500 to 1,000 okay boom and you'll see naturally as a result it's gonna start pulling out a lot of opportunities here there's 88 million definitely way too much we'll keep going down well, the next section here on the company you can type in current company so if you're looking at a certain company you can type in a certain company that they're working for or a past company which is also useful as well to the company type you know are they publicly held privately held nonprofit, etc which is also very useful depending on what you're searching for to company headquarters so again this is also really nice if you are only able to target after or go after certain companies that are headquartered in your territory this is really important to be able to search down so you don't end up wasting much time on leads that are not even in your own territory so that's a really neat feature as well so i'm not going to fill those up for quite yet as we go into the roles next so now look for specific people we could look for a specific function, which is very useful. It can give you some pre-populated ones here from operations, sales, education, etc. That's really, really nice to have. I personally don't like this function as much as the actual job title because sometimes the function is not as always as accurately, doesn't actually show up. So you may get some wrong people in there. But job title is a little more accurate, hopefully, in terms of who you want to filter down to. So let's say, for example, here, this is job title. This is really useful. Let's say, for example, if I want to go after a chief technology officers, so I'm hitting include, boom. And you'll see that it gives some other recommendations as well. So you, there may be some other titles that are kind of similar that you may want to include as well. So head of information technologies, I'm going to include that as well. Boom. And let's just keep those for that. As you can see here, now we have 130,000 results, which is still a lot. And here's a really, really simple little tip here. Let's just say, for example, if you kind of scroll through here and you see just some titles that just don't seem to make sense given what you are actually going after. So let me see if I can find an example here. CTO or CISO, that makes sense. You know, founders, you, 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 they run everything. No, this looks pretty good. So sometimes you'll have other ones where it just doesn't make sense. You want to filter them out. So I'm not going to waste time doing that. But you'll see here, if you were to search other, other ones, let's say, for example, it pulls back up. You also exclude certain titles that you don't want to have show up inside here if they hold multiple roles. All right. So let me go ahead and go to keep going down. You can go senior level, which is really useful from the CISO level or CXO level to manager, senior director. That's also very useful as well using current position, right? So let's just say, for example, I want to go after people that have been in the role for less than one year. Boom. I click on that. And immediately, I'm done 8,000 results. So very, very useful, right? So I'm just going to take that out for now because I don't want to have that filter. Okay. You're using current position. And then that's really useful too. And then this one's really neat right here. This is, these are spotlights. So this lets you get really, really granular. So for example here, change jobs in the last 90 days. These are some really neat prompts that would help you improve your messaging because if you know the change job last 90 days, if you create a list of just that, let me just choose this, boom, out of this big list, now we have 4,000 people that changed jobs in the last 90 days. So now your messaging can be very much in line to, hey, you know, like, you know, hey, I've got some new, new job change to CTO over at Ad Phoenix, right? So you can see how powerful that can be when you actually pull that type of filter. I'm going to remove that one. Mentioned in news last 30 days, right? That's really neat too. So if you can figure out which, when you, when you take a look and see what articles you may be mentioning, to mention that as well is really useful too. Now keep in mind, because these are some default cool spotlights that anybody can use, that means that you may have a lot of competition with the same messaging. So you still want to get hyper-personalized with that messaging as well to really cut through the noise. This is great too. Post on LinkedIn last 30 days. Let's click on this, All right? So boom. 
last thirty. That's really useful. So now you can go take a look at their what they post in the last thirty days. You can also engage and comment on them as well to build some trust and report them too, which is really useful. So I'm gonna close that again. Has shared experiences with you. This can be hit or miss. Follows your company. I mean, there's some other ones as well. Reviewed your profile. These are all kind of neat too. So that's really neat for spotlights. This is a new fe feature as of right now, which is I think it's been around for only for a few months, which is post content, which is keywords and articles. So if they have put any, if they had posted anything in articles like certain keywords, like let's just say like sales enablement. Let's see if that even pulls anything up. Ah, uh, it looks like, looks like they didn't post a single thing. Let's just type in, like, cyber security. All right, one result. All right, not very impressive. But you get my point. You can dive into other keywords as well, but that's kind of a neat feature as well. All right, so we'll keep going. So that is going to be post content spotlights. Now we go a little bit deeper. Because, again, a list of 130,000 is really quite too big of a list to kind of work through. So let's say from the personal section, you can go connection requests, first degree, second degree, or third. So that is nice because let's just say if they're a second degree connection or first degree, that means you're a little bit closer to them. And you may have potential referrals within your network that can help you do an introduction to go meet them as well. Let's take a look at second degree to kind of see what we get here. All right, 5K. Pretty good. Not bad. Well, let's just leave that as it is for now. And you take a look at geography. So this is also very useful as well because if you're going after, say, certain time zones or if you have only a certain territory that you can really sell into, this is very useful for you to filter list out even more. So let's just say, for example, I want to move the second degree connections. Let's just say, for example, I'm on the West Coast. Maybe my territory is on the West Coast. Let's say Oregon. Organize, it'll include that. California, include that. And Washington. Boom. And there you go. Now you can see it's 5,500 results. We're getting a little bit tighter. This is getting a little bit better, right? A little more accurate, okay? So as you keep going down here, you can go to different, if there's certain industries you sell into. So let's just say, for example, if I want to sell into, let's just say I sell into the healthcare space. Okay, there we go. Boom. There's a few different ones. So I'm just going to click, click on a few just to give you examples, right? Hospitals. Um, let's see, public health. Let's just include that one as well. Just for this example's sake. Keep going. Let's just include all of them. Okay. Let's take a look if I say hospitals. Yep, include that as well. All right. Okay. And let's just leave it as it is for now. So, boom. Now this is getting much better. Right? So now we have a more accurate list. You know what I should do, actually? This is if I was actually targeting hospital, it probably have to increase the headcount as well. So let's just choose this one, too. See what shows up. All right, cool. So we've got a few more on there as well. So it's getting tighter. User experience. Really useful. Again, so you can kind of see, you can filter down by how many user experience they have as well, which is very, very useful. Connections of, right? So if you know, if there are maybe, if you have maybe some closed one opportunities of people that you close maybe the CTO at a major healthcare system and you want to see who they're connected with you, you can throw that in there as well. So that's really useful, right? Groups are, I would say, in my opinion, not really that great because now people, those groups are kind of like pretty junky on LinkedIn. And then get more granular as well. But let's just say, for example, all, all the profile language would be English to make it simple, all right? That probably won't make it many changes. It didn't make any change at all. So, or school, exactly. So you kind of see some other neat ones as well. So this is pretty neat too. So again, very useful, but you can kind of see what this, I started with the mass level of the Lily, Hundred thousands of people down to 192 people, which they are CTOs or head of information technology with employee counts. Let's just say, for example, if I was going to go after you know a thousand or less employees that are on the West Coast who are in the healthcare industry, I have 171. So this is a m much better list to work off of as a result. Now, what you could do as well is then from there you take a look at like are there any lead lists you already have, right? Or if you want to build a new list, I, I don't pay for the in the CRM, but you can enable this if they're already in the CRM to exclude them, right? This is new in the persona, right? Which is pretty neat. I'm not sure how to use this one yet, so I'm not going to mention that one. Account list, if they're already inside your account list as well. Or perhaps the people you interact with already. Let's just say, for example, you want to remove people you already reviewed the profile and you've already contacted them. So that's really useful too. Okay. And you also want to remove people that are already in any of your save, save leads or accounts. You want to remove that too. Okay. So that way you don't double up and add them to another list as well. So you can see how powerful it is. Now we have this really, really good list of people we want to work off of. So that's how you build your first list. Now, here's the thing. What you definitely want to do first is to hit save search. Let's say, for example, as an example, we'll call this CTOs, West Coast, less than 1,000 employees. You can title whatever you want, but you what you want to be able to do is if you want to go back to this list later to work a little more, you're able to very quickly look at it and be like, cool, like this is exactly what it's all about because you may create some other ones for different parts of your territory as well. So let me hit save right there. Boom. So 
So now that we have this list right here, there's a couple different things we can do to it, right? We can either add them to a whole new list that we want to constantly keep working, which is a great way to do it, right? And you can add them all to the list, which is cool, or you can go by one by one and manually add each one. So for example here, maybe you want to kind of double check the data, make sure that this is pretty good. So you can click on each profile, you know, like Robert, you can take a look and just make sure does this align to the ICP, the ideal customer profile that you're actually going after, right? If it is, cool. You can hit save and you can go ahead and add them to a new list. So let's just say, for example, I'll create a new list. Let's just call this my CTOs, oops, West Coast, less than a thousand healthcare. Okay, you can call whatever you want. I'm just making an example of something to create and save. So boom, I just add him to the list, right? And then from there, if you want to, you could message him right there if you want, but I'm not gonna message him quite yet. And you wanna keep going down, take a look. You can keep adding as well. So I recommend from a batching work perspective, which has worked well for me, is go through, instead of just ma managing messages you each one, I'm gonna build a list and then I'm gonna work the list right after. So now I'm just taking my time to kind of do my homework a little bit, double checking everything, make sure they're solid, they're good, and then you add to the list as well. We'll hit save. We'll add to the same thing, same list, boom. So that's really useful. Now, if you want to be really, really efficient, right? Let's just say, for example, you know these are all going to be just ideal, or you're going to want to hit all these prospects up. You can just hit select all, and you can just hit save the list. Okay, boom. Okay, boom. Very easy. Minimize this, and you can go to the next one. Okay, and then you can just keep going. All right, it's the same idea, right? So I'm not going to take the time to go through, but that's how you build. You start building the lead list. So it's very, very simple, very, very easy to do. So next, I'm going to break down the difference between leads versus accounts because there are times where you want to work in accounts as well. It kind of depends on the role you're in, which may make a difference in terms of how you actually want to use these lists. But let me show you exactly what those are, which is very, very useful as well. So let me go back into Sales Navigator. So I went back to the home page here. So again, lead filters is what we did before. Now I'll do account filters. So let's just say, for example, you can see here there's company attributes, spotlights, and workflow. Right, so there's, there's some things that are kind of somewhat similar, but it's more so about the overall company. So you can see here, annual revenue. Let's say, for example, well, we want to do USD, and we want minimum is they're doing at least 100 million to 500. Okay, boom. You can see this pulls very quickly 160,000 results. Company headcounts, and maybe we'll look at certain sizes. So we want at least five, one to 5,000, 510. And 10 to 10,000 and beyond. All right, so again, that's getting more filtered. It's getting more uh, filtered down. And you see some really, really neat features here, such as company headcount growth. Think about this. What does that mean when the company's growing headcount? They're probably doing okay. They're probably doing okay. They're probably our cash flow efficiency. You can see the minimum max. Let's just say, for example, minimum, they're growing at 2% because 2% on a 500 million company is pretty, is pretty good. Max is called is 20%. Well, that's see what shows up here. All right, 8,000 results, all right? So pretty neat. Headquarters locations are pretty useful to say for US only, for just for this example. If you look at certain industries, you know, let's just say, we'll just choose one for example, healthcare, see what shows up here. 348 results. So you kind of see here, because we're going by account size, it is by the accounts instead. You can see different companies as well. And how about number of followers? This could be useful or not, but I personally find that it could be hit or miss, right? How about department head count? So what department you want to look at? Let's just say, for example, maybe you want to go after, let's just say, the sales department and a headcount growth. Let's just say 1,000 to 5,000. Let's see what, what will happen here. All right, zero results. All right, so that one didn't really work there. But you can't get my point there, right? You only can get my percentage as well, which is pretty useful. And also, are they a Fortune 50? I figured it wouldn't, probably wouldn't show up here because especially with the, the, the revenue size, but you can see this is useful as well. Are they Fortune 50, 50 100, 100 to 250, or Fortune 50 to 500, which is pretty useful as well. And here's a really neat one as well. So if you sell in the software space, what technologies potentially they're using, right? Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Google Ads. So that's really, really neat. And you can, you can, I mean, this is a, a laundry list of different tools. And especially if you sell a complimentary tool or a better tool, this is a great little hack right here, technologies used, all right? How about job opportunities? Okay, so like, are they hiring on LinkedIn? So you can see here out of 348, 305 are hiring on LinkedIn. That's pretty That's pretty interesting. Recent activities. Have they had senior leadership changes in the last three months? Or funding events? Again, now, because similar to what I mentioned before, the spotlights with the, even the lead list, if everyone can access those same things, then if you had the same very generic messaging, hey, so I just got recently funded, congratulations, 
that will fall to the sea the same so again you want to use with the, with the grain of salt to be able to create more custom messaging as well all right so pretty useful as well so it's a really really neat tool in terms of how you can utilize this especially if you have maybe a book of business or maybe you're gonna work only 10 accounts for the year or five accounts for the year this is a great to find those accounts and be able to start niching down directly within it inside of sales navigator now, a little side note here I want to mention here. So at the end of the day, with, with something that I've just shown you from the lead list, accounts, et cetera, things are always changing, right? They're always changing. They're always getting moved around. What I'm showing right now might be different tomorrow, right? Or even a weekend from now or a year from now, et cetera. So, et cetera. so just understand that. But the key is when you watch videos like this is to understand the core principles and then be able to apply, and then you apply critical thinking to how you can apply to your situation to help you build really, really good lead lists to actually work. So next, I'm going to walk through how do you actually find those lead lists or accounts that you create and how to actually start utilize them to start actually prospecting, doing outbound, to actually turn into book meetings and opportunities and actually close deals to actually make commissions to make some money. So you'll see up top here, which is where it is right now, you have accounts and you also have leads. So I'm going to go to leads right here, okay? And there's some ones that I have one for recruiting that I'm using and there's some system generator ones, but here's the example I made from earlier in this video, which is my CTO's one. I'm going to click on this and I only add 25 and you can see here this is pretty nice so you can kind of see this is kind of nice to be able to leverage you can say 25 total results and also post only in the past 30 days that's pretty neat right but now what I can start doing is I can start I can either select all right add another list or I can just start working on each one so for example I go in here I get a little note there they move my head out of the way take a look at you know key on here you know take a look to see what he's all about make sure it's a good fit oh he's been there well it's pretty awesome he's been there for over 10 years it's pretty awesome right so this is pretty neat so now you, you can take a look here it's like hmm has you know we don't share any connections all right. I also open up a little more. So open up a new tab. Take a look at Keon's background some more. We can look, we can look at the relationship. Oh, this is actually interesting. Like a decision maker. Hmm. Just see what it shows me. Ah, new CEO looks like. All right, very interesting. All right, so good to know. All right, we're not gonna. Oop, let me go back to this. Okay. Kind of read through. Leads a team of 40 plus employees. All right. Very cool. So now, once I look at this, right, like he's got some personalized stuff here. I can take a look. I can send him a quick message, right, or send him a connection request, right. So you know, you can, I'll probably send a connection request first. Okay. Hit connect. And I'll, you know, if it's any connection request, unless it's hyper personalized, then you're probably going to want to leave it blank. Let's say, for example, if I'm trying to blitz a bunch of people, I want to feel to my connection, to my following group, I'll probably leave a blank and send a bunch out and then see how they accept it. Now, if I can write something customized to them, I'm going to. So, for example, here, it's like it might be like you want to make it a little more personalized. Let me kind of take a look here. Experienced project manager, healthcare simple, compliant. Okay. Format this. And this is pretty cool. This guy went from director of financial aid. Actually, I don't he's, I'm assuming he's not still there. To the CTO code man. So it could be a little simple. Oh, I don't want to do. I don't do this. I want some connection request. It could be like, hey Keon, you know, hey Keon. Hmm. Was impressed. Well, saw you been. Been at Code Med for over a decade. Very impressive. Hoping to connect. Right. So that's decent enough, right? And send, obviously, if I could write something better, I would, but you can't get my point there, right? So you just file that off. Cool. Chances are pretty good. He probably, he's probably going to accept it and probably say, cool, I'm going to accept this guy. Okay? So easy. Now, I'm not going to send this guy, so I'm going to cancel that, right? But if you find something that's even better, if they have a better profile than this, that'd be good to write a little more copy, right? Let's, let's, let me show you another example right here. Let's take a look at Bob George. Bob George. Let's just open them up really quick. Same thing. Take a look. He has an activity. So I can comment on that. CT okay, interesting. Hmm. So he is at Amazon five years. Very cool. Wearable technology. Oh, interesting. That's super cool. So, you know, what you could do is take a look at this company, see what they're all about. And that sounds pretty cool, right? If it's about wearable technology, 
in healthcare, then your messaging can be something aligned to that. Hey, really impressed with what you guys are doing over there, creating the specific thing with, you know, whatever that they're doing, right? Hoping to connect. Very easy. Very. This is like the easiest message. Your goal is to get them to say cool, accept it, and then keep going, right? So very easy. So you can kind of see how you can continue. To work. You can just start going on a list. You start working these prospects. So just step one is like get, like send them a connection request and messaging them. Now you could. Some of you were saying, hey, well, Marcus, can I send them an email? You could definitely do that for sure, right? You definitely go here, boom, and fire off an email, right? Generally speaking, I find typically when you do outbound, it's gonna work a little better with the calls, emails, or doing first connection requests as well. Because the only downside with something like even in the email is number one, you're going to be limited for how many you can send. But also number two on the second piece, when it comes through in the inbox, it looks different. So people naturally are a little more resistant to it, right? They're like, oh, this is what's this all about? It stands out, right? Which is not necessarily a good thing. So hopefully down the road, LinkedIn will change that. So it's a little more friendly to outbound messages. All right. But on top of that, as of right now, something has changed. You also can't film a video embeds inside here. You have to do it via like a Vidyard or a Loom. While if they accept a request, you could actually message them within the inbox of LinkedIn an actual video, which is really neat, and audio too, which is really powerful. So more on that a little bit later on. Now to give you some other ideas on how to really utilize these lead lists, and this one wasn't necessarily the best example because I only added 25 people to it. And you can see here, we only have really two categories here, all the results, and then posted on LinkedIn the past 30 days. I mean, here you could go in here, take a look at what they posted on, and be able to send that first connection request based off what they posted. So for example here, let me just click on Robert to see what Robert, oh, he's in Portland, Oregon, that's where I'm at. Very cool. All right, let's take a look. Let me open him up. Let's see what it's all about. Take a look at his post. And this is over a month ago, so that's, probably, that's, really, that's really too far out. I wouldn't message someone based off that. But you can kind of see, this will give you some potential trigger points to actually message them about whatever they posted about if it was actually useful. So let's say, for example, if Robert had just posted this, but you know, last week, right? If this is an interesting article, I'd read the article, open it up, read it, find some relevant points, and then that'll be part of the messaging that they mentioned in there. Right, so that's how you can really just start standing out by taking a little bit of time, just do a little bit of homework, and increase the likelihood of selling the next step of them accepting a request to start engaging in that conversation. Now, I want to show you something else to help just get your brain kind of greased in terms of when you do out outbound extend, you're doing outreach to send these connection requests as well. So, for example, here I only have 25, 25 people that add to this lead list. I could have added more, but in the interest of this video, I don't want to take the time. But let's just say, for example, there's a bigger list here. This is automatic created, but you'll see there's going to be a few other categories which are really useful once you have a little bit bigger list to. So, for example, here you can see here, this list has 30 total people, but there's, it shows four of them changed on last 90 days. Again, this is a trigger event that allows you to potentially have relevant messaging because of that, right? Congrats on your new job, blah, blah, blah. They post on like the last 30 days, so you might be able to engage with that like I just I showed you. They share experiences, again, kind of look into it, see what's relevant about it. Or even one of them follows, I mean, follows, in my, you know, follows my company. This is obviously a recent connection request, but you can kind of see how useful that can be because really, you're just finding a good reason to actually reach out and have a conversation that's not like, hey, look at me, let's buy my stuff. This is just an easy, easy way to just enter into it right now on the flip side that was a lead list there's also gonna be the account list as well now i didn't create an account list but the same kind of concept that you can kind of you can still leverage as well when you're working opportunities because it's like you build a list and then you add them to your list and you start working the list and send a connection request and start outbound messaging as well cool so far we covered building the list and then number two we covered how to actually prospect and start working the lead list by sending a connection request right and then we talked about the processing lead list now here's a couple other kind of just simple bonus tips that can really help you from a long game perspective when you're using linkedin sales now which is creating some other lists that are, say, close one for future job changes, right? And close loss. So for deals, you win, right? So imagine if you had Bob George, let's say if, if I close Bob George, Bob's at Hero, right? And then two years later, a year later, he goes somewhere else after he implements our solution with his current company at Hero, goes somewhere else, and I see he's had a job change, I could easily message him, you know, hey, Bob, congrats on your new role at the CTO over at Meta, right? Oh, thanks so much. Great, whatever. And then fast forward 30, 60 days later, I could reach, you know, I could circle back around and have a conversation like, hey, how's everything going over there? So you can kind of see how he starts opening the door because of that situation, right? Or even on the flip side, even close loss, because look, I'm 
sure you're in a situation where you're doing a great job with the prospect, you take them down the journey, you, they're a great champion, but you get to the point where suddenly someone within the process says pause and everything, and you end up losing that deal. But maybe they were a huge, real, legit champion of you. They loved your solution. They want to go with you, but someone else is holding back the process. And then suddenly that person gets a new job somewhere else. Well, how cool is it to do the same product? Hey, congratulations on your new job at Meta, right? And they start working with them and hopefully now you can implement your new solution at Meta or wherever they're at now. So this is a great way to constantly be building future prospects because wherever they're going, they know I can trust you. They hopefully will take you with them as you go along. Now, in addition to all the stuff I mentioned so far, with this messaging and you're building these connections, you're building these lead lists, you want to make sure you're not only doing your messaging, et cetera, just purely off of just LinkedIn. You also want to make sure you're doing this in conjunction with following, email, et cetera, and any other means of outreach to that process because Omnichannel is very key. So this is why it's really important that you're using Sales Navigator in conjunction with any other tools you might have at your disposal to get phone numbers and email addresses because sometimes you might get a little bit lucky and maybe some of them will have an email address available. You'll see sometimes they'll, they'll have information there not always but sometimes right which is useful like, like this guy even has his he got his blog he's got his twitter right which is useful some of them will even have the phone number if you're lucky so that's cool but not all of them will so if you use this conjunction with stuff with other tools like say apollo or seamless or any of the tools that you might be using at the time of this recording that's really powerful to be able to work them on in sales now and also call and email and do all those things too. What I also want to show you is how to leverage alerts to nurture prospects. So this is a really, really powerful tool. I wish I knew about this early on. I just didn't know anything about it, right? But you know, when you're on the home screen, you probably saw this feed right here. And this is really useful because if I actually go inside here, the alert settings, and you, there's everything about your plan. But I want to show you this. Like, for example, you can set up email preferences. So for example, save search alerts. You can get emails about that. Different. That's not that important. Uh, who viewed my profile? So if they viewed your profile, you get notified about that, which is cool. Weekly top alert digest. Weekly... This is, that's neat, right? But what I really want to show you is the alert preferences. So this is like a feed right here. So if I go back to here, this is like a special sales navigator feed where it's people in your lead and account list doing things that you were not getting notified about, which is a trigger event, which allows you to message them because of that. So for example, here, let me go back to here. So you can see like, okay, they shared an update. They post something. Oh, really powerful. So whether or not you're going to message them or you go right to their post, or whatever they update about, maybe they got a new job or maybe they got promoted or they put a post out there. That's powerful to be able to have a comment and like it, engage on theirs or reshare what they put out there as well. Because again, that helps you stand out. Or they start a new position in the same company. They mentioned the news. They accepted your request. Right? They accept your request, boom, that's a great time to immediately fire off an email to, or fire off a message to them and say thank you so much or even call them or email them. You can, so you can see how it's not necessarily going to be a linear process every time, but when you understand how this is a powerful tool to engage them in different ways, it's really, really useful. All right? They engage with your post, your company. They viewed your profile, start a new position, really useful. So again, save accounts, it's the same concept. Right, and it's just it's even more robust, I would say. Right, so always have been moving from a save account to a newcomer and incre increased rate. They had someone account viewed your profile, they announced new funding, preparing to grow. They've had layoffs, good to understand that. Right, that can impact your deal. Senior hires and saved accounts, the people are researching your company, slow growth, mention the news. So you can see this, this is just really, really useful stuff as well. So you can have this all set up as well. And on top of that, it's in your feet. So when you're going through there you, and you're working your list, you're messaging as well, and you're going down here and you're also engaging with them because of that, this is another great way just to nurture your prospect and to stay on top of them, right? So say, for example, if this is, if Warren was one of your prospects, he posted a post, now you can go here and you can take a look at his post. And look, no one liked this as post. Sorry, Warren. So you can like Warren's post and you can write a nice little comment if it's, if it's actually a good blog posts about whatever right so you can you can see how neat that really really is to just again cut through the noise and stand out and be different than any, every other who's just being boring and lame on linkedin okay so far in this one-on-one -on -one training for sales navigator we cover how to build a hyper target list how to utilize some of these these very very simple searches again it's nothing crazy it's not hard it takes just it takes just some of you X you knew, kind of play around a little bit to find good list for a good lead opportunity for yourself. Then number two, we discuss how to actually process and build those lead lists, right? Actually, how to build them and how to save and size that we can work those lists every single day, which I recommend, right? Also, number three, we discuss how to leverage the alerts in the feed and the email so you get to nurture the process as well, which is really, really powerful. And if you do all these things, you can have a lot of success. If you do it consistently, you can have a lot of success with targeting prospects and actually building lead lists and filling account of both qualified appointments. Now, if you want to take the next level, the key is really being able to have a robust social selling strategy, right? So I'm going to touch on this a little bit, but for example here, you can take a look at your social selling index. So for example, if I go here 
you, you click on your, your little profile header right here. You go to your social selling index. And it'll tell you like what LinkedIn calls your SSI rank, right? So it's like here, for example, mine, they say I'm the top 1% in the industry SSI rank, top 1% of my network. And it kind of breaks down what it is for your category from establishing a professional brand, finding right people and how much you engage, build relationships as well. So pretty neat. So when you know it's really, really cool. Now, it means absolutely nothing without having a good strategy to actually implement to get to this level. But more importantly, how to actually use social selling to actually generate leads. And that's from building following lists, actually creating content, engaging, etc. right? So with this video, I cover a lot so far in this video for how to use Sales Navigator. But if you want to see my in-depth breakdown of exactly how we actually got to this ranking, but more importantly, how we do the rest of the stuff from optimizing your profile, because it's really important for increasing your acceptance rate to creating content, and creating inbound leads, et cetera. What you're going to want to do is go watch this next video right here, in which I break down way more detail, exactly the other parts of my LinkedIn strategy to make this one cohesive machine that basically prints cash for my business. See you in the next video.